Hello YouTube, it is Chris here, and holy crap, have I been gone a long time. Um, and I sincerely apologize for that. Um, here recently from starting my own company, uh, to which you see some of my shameless plugs and promotions, <laughs> up to a um, uh, vehicle accident that uh, my family and I got in on a trip to Chicago, Illinois. Um, we went to go take the kids to uh, go see downtown Chicago, and boom, car accident. So if you look up there, you kind of see the cosmetic damage that was done. Thankfully, none of us were hurt, and we were able to actually, we trucked along, and we said, screw this crap, we're still going to Chicago. <laughs> so we took, uh, we picked up all like, the damaged debris off the road, popped it in the trunk. Luckily, we, um, it was due to snow, and it was just our call, car involved, thankfully. But um, what really pissed me off is not a single person stopped to help. Um, and we were still in Indiana, um, so I was a little mad. Um, I know it was in a snowstorm. Not a lot of people want to get out of their vehicle and go assist somebody, but I was like, really? No good Samaritan? Like, if I was the other, on the other end of the spectrum driving up and I just witnessed a car accident, I would be like, holy shit, babe, we got to stop. And I would have stopped and tried to just, it, at the least, made sure they were okay. Not a single person stopped. Everyone drove by. We were there for like, you know, 30 minutes and we hundreds of cars passed by us, even in the snow. And I was just like, you guys are assholes. Like, all you guys suck. So, yeah, I have, I, no, that was, anyway, that's, a, that's another discussion for another time. But I am back and here to make videos on a regular basis again. So I apologize, like I said before, for um, not being so regular lately. Um, <laughs> so regular, anyway. Um, so what I'm here to talk about today overall are my survival knives, and I'm going to be focusing on the DFS tracker design, which was my first prototype, and, but real quick, I'm going to talk about my shop. Um, it's going to be plugged, it's plugged into my about page on here on YouTube. It is in the profile page on my Instagram, which you guys need to follow me on Instagram. I don't care if you don't do Instagram. I'm serious, guys. There's a buttload of businesses out there, including mine. Where I still do my, I do most of my giveaways out there. It's an awesome, awesome thing. And everybody's like, Facebook was confusing enough. Dude, it is so simple. There's like five buttons. All you have to do is upload a picture, put a description of what it is. Bam. Go search, go search DFS Blade Works. That's what it is on here. And you go follow me. And then you can see all of the new knives that I get in. All the cool new gears. My giveaway items that I work with. Um... When I have new soap scents come out, when I get um, new shipments in from my MacGyver Multi Tools, um, when there are you know, customer reposts and testimonials about the survival knives that are um, that um, get made and pushed out to them, when they get you get to see all of that all the time, and it's a really good way to kind of just um, it's a really good community, guys, and it's a lot less bullshit and drama than you run into on Facebook. I just got to be honest. Um, so real quick, I'm going to um, jump to two things that I'm really, really in love with. Um, first thing is my MacGyver multi-tool. Um, on my Etsy shop, this runs for like 27 bucks. It is awesome. It's got a um, hex wrenches. Um, they also double as a glass breaker in an emergency. So if you're in a car or you have to get someone out of a car, it's got a really cool bottle opener, oxygen tank key, and it's only three sixteenths of an inch thick. Because I want this to be a, po a pocket-friendly multi-tool. And it's a really interesting conversation starter. Um, but I offer that in metric and SAE or American Standard. Because, well, I have a lot of international orders. I've had um, Canadian orders. I've had British. I've had German. I've had Australians order this stuff. And so I wanted to have metric available. Um, if you have any questions, drop down into my Etsy shop in the description box below and go check those out. Uh, they're currently sold out because I just got done selling them yesterday. Had a really big sale on them, and it was really, really fun. Also, I've got my own brand of soap. Heck yeah. Well, it's a collaboration, really, with an awesome company called Hagwood Soap. They're down in South Florida. And these guys know skincare. These guys are awesome. Um, Chris Hagler is, yeah, Chris, bunch of great guys. <laughs> um, Chris Hagler is the owner of Hagwood Soap. And, um, well, I'll kind of just bring it out. Um, this is, like, one of the last bars left. Um it is a dark berry um, scent, kind of um, mixed between like blackberry and grape as far as the scent goes. But um, there's a lot of really cool ingredients in there that have never been shown off before. Um, there is uh, cranberry butter, aloe, um, honey, and there's a touch, 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 just a little touch of caffeine. 
So, um, yes, it does have like a slight skin contact transfer. It doesn't irritate your skin or nothing. It's just a hint. And it kind of gives you a very awake and alive feeling. It's really cool. So if you're getting ready to go out or you're trying to wake up in the morning, it is awesome daily use soap. It's really, really, really gentle on your skin. Um, and it's all natural. It's really good stuff. Um, definitely go check out uh, my website. I've got another scent coming out. Anyway, I'm done talking about that stuff. So let's focus on the knives. And do yeah, you see this? See this mirror polish here? Oh, it's so cool. So you can actually see my fingers in the in the blade edge. That's so freaking awesome. I love high grind, um, high grit polishes. Anyway, um, we're gonna get all these out of the way. Yeah, this is the. Uh, I usually edit all this these mistakes out, but I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna be all human today. And let you guys get down to the heart of the matter and have some. You know, I'll leave that it's in the back. So today, what I'm gonna be talk about is the DFS tracker. Oh man, this thing is a beast. Now, this is loosely based off some other tracker designs you have seen, but um, the concept here is I wanted to make this knife a little more useful. And what I mean by that is the tracker design, the overall concept of the blade was great. Um, it had that um, the compound grind um, on it with the for draw cuts. It had a convex edge on it. It was designed to do a multitude of tasks, um, and it's supposed to do them very, very well. Well, I've noticed uh, most of the blades, like it would, they would end here. They were like four and a half to five inch long blades, and I was like, "That is not long enough. That is not what I'm feeling." And I wanted more weight and more length and more structure behind um, the blade design. So I was like, "I want this to be more versatile." So the best way, in my mind, this is all my personal opinion, is to make it longer. So this is a seven and a half inch blade. This is a big, big, big Mac Daddy. It's got a 90 degree spine, very, very strong stout tip. It's convex grind with a hat flat grind draw cut area. Um, five and a half inch handle, nice generous lander hole. But um, I want it, I like how it um, the pommel fattens up right here because when you're using it, it, it keeps it from just slipping out of your hand, it catches right there. And you can actually, it was actually designed so you can grip back there. So you actually have this handle material sticking out. It is ready to roll. But um, I wanted it to be designed where I made this area for the convex grind. So when you're doing chopping and batoning, you don't really start um, affecting this draw cut area too much um, by nicking the blade. So I made this a little bit shorter. So it's not, if you look, it's not halfway across. This, this area is actually a little bit longer. But um, this blade is still really, really sharp. There is no blade damage on this knife whatsoever. It's still, even after going through all of the footage that you've seen, and some, um, this has been my go-to knife um, from day one. This was my original prototype design. Um, this one's actually made in 50 wood 60, but the blade still I use now is 80 CRV2, and that blade still is phenomenal. It is really strong. This it is what the rest of... Um, these knives are made out of, um, yeah, like my electrochemical etching. It's really cool. That's a really cool freaking logo. Um, a lot of you have asked over the course of the past two months that um, I came out with this design. You'd be like, can you do testing on it? Oh, duh. Of course I'm going to do testing. But, I, dude, I have a lot more on my plate than I used to. Between my normal job, my new business, running the YouTube channel, my family, um, I'm preparing to move. Um, across state lines, so it's going to be a big move. So there's a lot of money being having to be saved up and everything. So if you uh, <coughs> support me, <laughs> sorry guys, I know shameless plug. It's okay, I'm done with that. But um, I'm going to take this through. We're going to shut up, and I'm going to get down to the grit and the testing of this um knife. If you want to know more about it, just ask me some questions. I'm also going to have full specs down in the description box below, and I'm also going to put a link to the. Um, the older video where I kind of showcased what this knife is and what it's about and everything down in the description box below because this is the second video for this knife. So I'm going to shut up. Let's get to it.
All right, guys. Well, this is some spare ribs from Tyson, some bones and a lot of meat. But um, this has nothing to do with the capabilities of the tracker other than for entertainment purposes. So don't take this part too seriously. Just have some fun. Look at that, that was just a small little strike and went all the way through there. Oh my gosh. That was awesome. Took out the paracord and everything. Oh man, that was a good cut. Let's see if we can uh, string this thing back up and keep going. All right, so we know the first cut actually did really, really well with a just a normal slash, but I'm gonna give it a couple snap cuts and see um, how the recurve part of the blade actually uh, digs into uh, flesh and uh, game. Whoa! Holy Jemima, look at that. Oh my gosh, guys, that is that far in, and it's about three to four inches long. This thing just tore that meat apart, and that's, wow. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's actually through bone in a snap cut. Oh man, that was awesome. Let's keep going. All right, so next up what I'm gonna do is the snap cut actually did really well. So I'm just gonna have some fun and just destroy this meat. Look at that guys, in just a few seconds, it tore this meat up. I mean, it was ripping through bone, right up in here, if you guys can see the bones right here, it's ripping straight through the bone. So the meat just tore this up like it wasn't even there. That's what the DFS tracker can do. Go to my shop and go check this bad boy out, you will not be disappointed. Oh man, <laughs> sorry I got a little excited there. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the overall footage of that. Um, now that is just a sample to kind of show um, what the knife can do. Um, are my knives like super knives? No, they're, it's a knife. It's a well-built tank knife that is designed to do a lot of tasks very well and be very, very tough and ready for action for anything. I mean, I, I think that's what any custom knife maker or knife designer will is trying to do. Now, to kind of give you an idea of how this all works and this breakdown of my shop, so if you decide to take a look or um, take an order, don't be hesitant just to send me a conversation so you, if you're confused by the drop down menu in my Etsy shop, it's no big deal. But um, this is the DFS, DFS Bush Buddy. It is the smallest so far in my um, survival knife line. Um, this one is sporting carbon fiber handle scales, a thousand grit hand polished finish. Um, F40 uh, unidirectional carbon fiber for anybody who wants to get super technical. This is the DFS Bullet Bowie. It is designed to be a little bit more um, piercing compatible, but I also wanted to give it some semblance of the, track, the, um, the tracker's usefulness, but I didn't um, make it more of the sweet spot because it would just be a tracker with a swedge. I mean, really. Um, this is a little bit shorter. This is six and a half inches long. Still has the 90 degree spine and here, this is where most of this, I'm trying to show you the different handle materials that I that are, that are offered through the shop. Um, this is orange and black G10 in the Anzo pattern. That um, It's just a really sharp, very clean looking um, handle design. And this is the DFS Ranger. Oh man, this is one of my favorites for, I would say, a companion knife. Um, four and a half inch long blade. I have a choil in here because I think anything under four inches is very important to have a choil so you can do the finer tasks if you need to. This has Anzo pattern, which is honestly my go-to. Um, unless you don't want it, definitely let me know. But um, it's either Anzo or just you know straight smooth contour handled. Um, this has moon glow liners, and I showed that off in a previous video. But um, the reason why moon glow is in there, some people think it's unrealistic, but Let's be real. Most of the time, you are going to be in a, I mean, the most threatening situation you're going to be in is surviving on your own. Now, for me, like, let's say you're by the campfire or whatnot. This moon glow material glows in indirect light, UV, what have you, a flashlight. Anything will make this thing glow. And as you can see right here, we're going to turn the lights down low. Um, yeah, it's still daylight, so it's not too bad. But you can see the subtle glow right here, but we're going to um, blind you for a second. 
And why I like this concept is if you're working at night with your knife and let's say you drop the knife. I mean, it's perfectly possible there's a lanyard hole for it saying so you should be using it, but it makes the knife glow. One, it, there's a cool factor there <laughs> right away, but um, it's really good for nighttime. I hope you guys enjoyed the footage of the DFS tracker video and real quick, something I wanted to show off is um, this knife is still freaking sharp even after all that testing. And I've tested this knife on my own, for my own personal accord before I started filming. So I'm going to go grab some paracord real quick and come back with the magic of video. And just to let you guys know, I have not sharpened or resharpened this knife since um, and it was first completed. It is still from the original edge retention after over the course of like it's about four months old and I've used it a lot. So we're going to jump real quick and I'm going to show you that. And then we'll conclude the video. All right, guys. So we are back and I have the 550 cord right here. And we're basically going to take this right here, cut very, very, very easy. And then I'm going to jump over and do the convex edge area. Get this balanced. Dude, like honestly, this freaking index finger when I cut it a while back was so freaking annoying. Boom, done. Sorry, honestly, it's my gimp finger trying to grab the freaking paracord. It was so annoying. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the footage from this YouTube, um, of my DFS tracker uh, design. Like I said, if you want to support me and my family and my business, drop down into the description box below where you can pick up some soaps. Uh, from time to time, I have the uh, MacGyver multi-tools. I've got laner beads available. But um, I'm out.